We're here to talk about racism and the church. Seven days ago, we were dealing with the, uh, the horror of the, the, the murder of George Floyd. Life is divine. What was taken from him was something that God gave to him. Right. My thing is, this is a life. Correct. And a life is gone. Yes. We need to have this conversation. We need to sit down and talk. Something that's missing in the conversation that we were talking about earlier this week is there's a lot of emotion behind it. You wake up every day just not knowing. I think it's a very grace-filled balance to say, is this world fallen? Yes. Do I have a reason to fear for my life as a black man on a daily basis? Yes. yes. But if I'm living for the life to come, I can seek justice here and now, knowing for sure 100% that God will bring ultimate justice one day. How do we move, um, how do we bring healing to those who have gone through that? What role does the church play? What healing and forgiveness and restoration look like? And, and racism does raise its ugly head even in the church. Absolutely. I mean, we all understand and we all know that Sunday morning is the most segregated hour of the week. But thank God at Calvary, that has changed. Yeah. Paul actually introduced the idea that those who are in Christ actually make up a collective race. And that makes us great. Yep. That makes us a part of this kaleidoscope of what heaven is gonna look like. Right. The body of Christ is really the single voice for unity on the earth today. That's right. Tonight we stand and pray with those who feel tremendous pain and loss right now. And God, thank you that you can heal this land. God, you can heal our hearts tonight. God, forgive us of our sin. Forgive us of our pride. And God, may we begin to love each other at a whole new level. No matter the skin color, may we see that you have divinely created us and fashioned us for your purposes.